Hi everyone, this is Omkar and you are watching the third episode of Exploring Azure Functions. In this series, we are exploring whether or not Azure Functions is capable of replacing the whole backend of an application or, or not. So this is the home page of our application. Let's get to edit it. But wait, we in this in the last episode we learned how to deploy the code via GitHub. So let's start using Visual Studio Code from now on and ignore using the app service editor. So here's the here's the functions index.js file and it's located into a folder called sample get request. It is deployed into the Azure functions via my GitHub account and the public repository that I've created. So to refer back, to find out how to do that, please refer back to the previous video. So in this video, we are going to talk about persistence. I've created a module named commons.js that has some code in it. Let's write it. So in the, so in an architecture of a web server, there's always a database connection maintained between the database and the app server to efficiently store and retrieve the data. So let's assume here's the app server and it has a pool of database connection that it iterates over and distributes the load of the queries to to get the optimal performance of out of the database. Now in our case we have a serverless container called azure functions that has many of your functions running and what they are going to do is every time they are going to create a new connection with the database and destroy it after it is done so app server does doesn't ever do that you have a get request it uses an existing database connection and uh, retrieves the data, processes it, and gives it back to the requester. So the one major setback here for a serverless architecture is, does it have to really create a connection every time you invoke a function, or is there any way to persist that connection as the app server does? Let's try and figure it out. So in your day-to-day -day life, you're not, not just going to be persisting the database connections. There are cache connections and so many other stuff. So let's assume that there is a variable A that holds your database connection and its current state is 11. Okay. So let's give it a random state. And So I'm going to create a function here that will allow me to change the state. I'll just increment the state and another function will allow me to retrieve the state. So this is how our commons module looks. And we will require this module in this function. So let's fashion this JSON response a little bit. Let's return the state of our database connection into this variable called cats. Mm -hmm. 
now let's try to deploy this code and try to run it get status get push and let's try to pull it from the deployment okay it has pushed the code let's go here and pull that's all you have to do as your functions container will automatically refresh and load all the packages that you added let's try and it turns out that our commerce.js has some mistakes in it let's fix those and try to push them and run it pulled here and let's see if it works or not oops an error it's a typo guys oh one last mistake return this <laughs> now we are good to go I guess yeah we have the cats now let's see how the cats are initialized so the state was 11 first but in the first request it is showing at showing as 12 now typically if it was purely serverless it would show 12 number again but let's see it is incrementing the number so what is happening here the state object is getting persisted so that is what the point of this video was whenever you are creating a module outside your function object and you are requiring that inside your function code that is what as your server what as your functions is gonna do is persist that object state into the process so as it can be used at a later point of time so totally similar to the app server maintaining con pool of contain pool of database connections and uh, delivering or distributing the load of the queries to one of those pool of database connections that's that's a great stuff we have figured out today and uh, i guess this is the key feature that azure functions is gonna use to have an upper hand over other serverless features and of course the app servers so i hope you enjoyed this video and let me know if there is any doubt or ambiguity in this code and this code is available on my github i'm sharing the i'm putting the link into the description please let me know your feedback thank you